So, I was going to do a video on this article in particular. Uh, new rumor claims Marvel Studio is reevaluating its release lineup for Phase 5 and 6 over concerns about poor quality. You know, it, it talks about how in Phase 4, all the movies but like two were disasters. The only two were spider-man but that's a sony movie not really a disney marvel movie then dr strange multiverse madness almost broke a billion dollars oh i'll admit that but still was a disaster of a movie killing off pre-established uh, well not pre-established characters but characters people really loved from the comics and everything like that getting a really good fan casting of john krasinski as captain not captain why the heck did i say that mr fantastic as Mr. Fantastic. I wanted to say Captain Marvel, the Cap and all that, but I don't know why. Anyways, Mr. Fantastic. Oh yeah, I was thinking about Captain Marvel because the other Captain Marvel character that was in there. And you know, everybody getting killed off. But they go through all the movies that were disaster for Phase 4. Rumor says that they're going to come out because and change everything. All their distribution and focus more on quality over quantity and things of that nature. But that could also just be because, you know... They're hemorrhaging money. They go into like money details. And then they end where I was going to end. With a the wonderful point out from David Zasloff. That uh, he's. Their Disney company is right. Because they get paid to be right. But there's a new thing that came out. Just a little bit ago. Kevin Foggy reveals. Which movie franchise. Is at the peak of the MCU. No. I don't think that rumor is true anymore. I don't think they're going to be rearranging the phase four. Well, phase five and phase six. Because they're trying to get better quality out and better content to all of you people. No, I don't think that. Because this article, the, these comments from Kevin Foggy, really put point out kind of like what they think about the next phase about how they think uh Thanos might have been great but Kang's going to be better even though Kang even though I think Kang can be a mighty threat for the Avengers he isn't Thanos level Kang can be cool Kang can be a fun little thing but he's no Thanos Marvel Studios presented Kevin Foggy recently shared with fans that what meant uh, what movie franchise is currently at the peak of the MCU heading into phase five? Yeah, you you guys want to know what the peak of the MCU is? Well, you probably already guessed it. It's Ant-Man. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Oh, that's peak MCU right there. No, I like Ant-Man 1. That's not peak MCU. Peak MCU would be Captain America. Peak MCU would be Iron Man. Phase 1. The OGs. The kings of Marvel. The people that were, honestly, the heavy hitters. The leads. Those were the peak of MCU. Ant-Man's not the peak of MCU. Ant-Man's not a leader. At least, not MCU Ant-Man. I could have an argument that maybe Hank Pym from the comics could have been a leader. Scott Lang is definitely not a leader in the MCU. That, that is a ridiculous... He is nowhere near peak MCU. Ant-Man and the Wasp is so forgettable. Ant-Man is a fun movie. But it's... A side story while bigger stuff's going on. Foggy recently shared his thoughts. Yep, 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 yep. Which Marvel franchise is peak MCU? During Marvel Studios panel at CCXP 2022 in Brazil, Marvel Studios president Kevin Foggy took the stage to discuss Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, which looks super fake because it's on that all that green screen stuff. It looks super awful. And I have no interest in seeing the movie. They're, they're trying to get you in with that great song. Fantastic song. But it, I. they're just taking all the wrong hits from Guardians of the Galaxy over and over and over again. Fantastic song. Awful movie. 
When asked what it meant to have the threequel kick off Phase 5, it ain't gonna be pretty. Foggy admitted that he loves it while looking back to how the first Ant-Man movie ended Phase 2. I like the first Ant-Man movie. I thought it was fine. Ant-Man and the Wasp is so forgettable though. So Ant-Man is not peak MCU. Just because it ended Phase 2 doesn't mean anything. Ant-Man was a fun, joyous movie. It ended a phase. So what? This is we're we're not talking about Endgame. We're not talking about Avengers. We're talking about Ant Man. Ant Man was just some fun romp. That that's why I enjoyed it. From all the aliens, from Ultron, from interdimensional demons to simply just arms dealer, kind of a comedy thief style espionage movie that wasn't really espionage but you know how to sneak into a building to try to s break the freaking oh it was yellow jacket suit and stop that from being sold to hydra that's all that movie was have a little one a small little fight between scott lang and ant-man and falcon again it it was something off the beaten track it was just something different that i enjoyed Still watch it from time to time, but it's not peak MCU. It was a side story, more or less. <sighs> and in Phase 4, he reminisced of Scott Lang's journey from being a criminal to saving the world. Nothing how he loves... Noting how he loves that the Ant-Man franchise is now at the peak of the MCU. As Phase 5 gets underway next year. Yeah, because that's your only legacy character that you really have you you got rid of a lot of your other legacy characters you've diminished the hulk granted ant-man's just a joke ant-man the wasp the wasp was the main character who was the villain again supposedly ghost but ghost got saved because of the other i can't not remember her name had magical god powers and was able to reconnect her you had some other characters in there like that I don't know what they were after. You had some other side story. It was all over the place. The only the only reason Ant-Man and the Wasp, it wasn't great. Actually, it's one of the worst movies that happened. The only thing that it did do was show the dusting and end credit scene and the effects of that. And it led into Endgame. That, that's all it did. Same with Captain Marvel. All it did was great marketing that said, hey, this is going to have effects in Endgame. No, it didn't. That's the only reason those movies actually saw anybody watch them. Even Ant-Man and the Wasp, nobody really watched. It was one of the worst movies that had didn't break a billion. Didn't bring in anything. It actually was one of the lowest grossing movies. I love it. I said it a minute ago that I love that these amazing people that we've been with now for eight years... Ant-Man ended Phase 2 and now kicking off Phase 5 in such a huge way. Much like Scott Lang himself going from this petty criminal coming out, out of jail to, to see his daughter to saving the world in Endgame. How did he end up getting involved in Endgame? The only real reason he got involved in Endgame is because a raccoon finally pulls a lever, pulls him out of the quantum zone... And he just comes over and basically says, hey, let's use the quantum zone for time travel. And ended up a time travel storyline that kind of has some real issues along with that blip, you know. Has some, has some real ramifications that they don't really talk about. They just let it go by. Say, hey, well, we put everything back in place, you know, not everything, nothing changed. What? But you still have a blip. I love that the Ant-Man franchise is now at the peak of the MCU and kicking off Phase 5. Why? Honestly, I would argue peak MCU is Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians 3 looks to be one of the best parts of Phase 5. Probably gonna hit that billion dollar mark. Even though it doesn't make sense that we're introducing Adam Warlock anymore. <laughs> Thanos is gone. 
That whole storyline's over. The Infinity Arc storyline's over. Why are we introducing Adam Warlock now? I don't know. Anyways, that's a tangent for another day. Guardians of the Galaxy probably is peak MCU. Not Ant-Man and the Wasp. Ant-Man and the Wasp is side story. Because you made it a side story. I would argue he needs to be more front and center. But you you diminished him from... You, you diminished the storyline from its first outing. Still like that movie. I didn't think the character was bad. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. I still watch it from time to time. But that's not peak MCU. That's a side story. That's a side quest. That's a side event. That's all it was. Additionally, Ant-Man 3 director Peyton Reed. Is that Peyton or Patton? Peyton. Yeah, Peyton. Was asked about the pressure of opening the next phase. Revealing that he's excited that the movie is starting off phase 5 in a big way. Reed explained that this movie is the biggest adventure that Ant-Man and the Wasp have ever gone on. Teasing new places and a villain in Kang the Conqueror that's different from anything or anyone they've ever encountered. Well, no. No, they've already encountered Kang. And Loki. Kang was in Loki, remember? It was Kang all along. You know, the guy that proved that there was no free will and then Loki killed him. So now that there's free will and the timelines are all diverging. You see, this is why MCU so effed. Because you don't know what the heck's going on anymore. Because Kang was already introduced, but now they have a new Kang. Which, yeah, that's what you ended up having is multiple Kangs. But he was already introduced and we already knew he existed in Loki. He's not being introduced now. This is another Kang. But how is this Kang going to impact what Loki set up? Oh, probably a lot. And also Kang is no Thor. Another thing that people are starting to forget. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, was originally supposed to be a part of Phase 4. There was a lot more movies supposed to be a part of Phase 4, but Phase 4 was being a disaster, so they ended it with Black Panther Wakanda Forever, started it back, started Phase 5 with Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantumania. People keep forgetting that. That that was not just... That was a few months ago when they came out and said, hey, Black Panther's gonna be the end of Phase 4 now. It was supposed to be some other movies. Actually, I think Ant-Man and the Wasp was supposed to be in the middle of all this. Middle of phase four. I think they had a whole lot more movies planned. Not getting those now. I did not feel any pressure until you asked me that question. Now I feel pressure. No, we're really, really excited. We're starting off phase five in a big, big way. This is the biggest adventure that Ant Man and the Wasp have ever gone on. Time traveling, fighting in the war against Thanos, and bigger than that. Oh no, you're going to accidentally get sucked into the quantum realm and have to fight Kang. We're going to some strange places and we're encountering an antagonist who's unlike anything they've ever experienced. And that includes Thanos. Thanos wanted to destroy half of life in the existence Kang just wants to conquer timelines. That's all Kang is. Thanos would eat Kang for breakfast. So now you're trying to diminish Thanos. No. Thanos is an intimidating threat. Thanos succeeded. Thanos won. Kang is nowhere near the level of Thanos. Kang could be. If, if you did Kang... Then Thanos, I potentially agree with this. You know, hey, we're introducing Thanos who's nowhere near, who's even more intimidating than Kang. Yeah, I would have agreed with that. But Thanos had a bigger storyline. Thanos had the Infinity Arc. That was what we were dealing with for so long. You're trying to replace Thanos' big bad spot that you guys took away because Endgame was actually the end of the MCU, in my ultimate opinion. You're trying to get that new big bad, that overarching big bad, and that's going to be Kang, and he's nowhere near as intimidating as Thanos. I think he's an interesting villain. I think he could be a great villain, but he's no Thanos. And Ant-Man and the Wasp are not peak MCU. 
how Ant-Man films have been important to the MCU. Oh, well, what has have they done? Uh, they ended Phase 2. They showed more of the dusting after Infinity War and gave the time travel ability to Endgame. And now they're kicking off Phase 5. That's all that they've done. They haven't really done anything for the phases. They haven't done anything super impactful in this world. Oh, out of this quantum... We're going to go into the quantum realm. Oh, we got out of the quantum realm. Now the quantum realm's being used for time travel. And another movie. What? No, they're not super impactful. They were side stories. It is not peak MCU. Arguably, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is going to be peak MCU. A great storyline. The last of its kind as well. Because James Gunn is over at DC now. You lost James Gunn. So no. Ant-Man and the Wasp is not peak MCU. But let me get you guys' thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Share it out with all your friends. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video and go live. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.